Hi everyone and welcome back. Now in today's video we are going to discuss about the basics of VPC endpoints. Now from what I have seen in majority of the organization that deals with some kind of a sensitive workloads or when communication between two AWS services like EC2 to S3 or EC2 to other services is quite extensive. In such cases VPC endpoint based architecture is very common. So let's go ahead and understand the basics of VPC endpoint. But before we do that, let's look into the challenge that organization used to face before this feature was introduced to understand what benefit this provides. So let's go ahead and quickly understand the challenge that lot of organization used to face. Now for EC2 instances to be able to communicate with other AWS services. Now AWS has more than 200 services right now. So for inter service communication, the traffic had to flow via the internet. And this was quite a concern for many of the organization. So let's understand this from a diagrammatic perspective where you have a set of EC2 instances and you have a set of AWS services on the right. So for EC2 instance to communicate with these set of services, the public internet was widely used. Now the intercommunication between the services can be for wide variety of reasons. For example, every day the data in the EC2 instance would be backed up to S3 bucket. The data size can be much more larger specifically if you have a database and so on. So when you have internet that comes into picture between communication between AWS services, there are many disadvantages here. Now the second big disadvantage is related to the private workload. Now many of the organization that deals with very sensitive information, they have a private subnet where the EC2 instances cannot communicate to the internet at all. Now the private workload might deal with various kind of information. It can be military, it can be other sensitive areas as well. So if we understand it diagrammatically, it would look something like this. So let's say that you have a public subnet. So public subnet is the subnet which has internet communication. So the EC2 instances that are part of the public subnet, if they want to communicate with various AWS services, it becomes very easy. What they have to do? They have to go through the internet gateway and they'll be able to communicate with all of them. So this is not an issue. The issue is where you have a isolated private subnet. So the resources that are part of this subnet have no internet communication at all. Now when these resources wants to communicate with other AWS services for wide variety of reason, it is not really possible primarily because there is no internet route at all. It can be through internet gateway, it can be through NAT gateway, etc, etc. Sometimes the auditors are very strict that these set of instances should not communicate with internet in any case whatsoever. So when you have such kind of a workload, again, things becomes much more difficult. For example, let's say that you have a database in this isolated private subnet and that database wants to upload its daily backup to a S3 bucket. Now since there is no internet route, things becomes quite challenging here. Now based on the last two slides that we were discussing, there were certain main challenges and there were a lot of customer demand. So what was the demand? The question that comes is, if all of the resources are hosted in AWS, why do they need internet for communication between each other? And this is a genuine question. If the EC2 instance is in AWS, if the S3 bucket or if the DynamoDB table is in AWS, why do you need internet for intercommunication between both of these resources? Why can't AWS use its own private network for communication between them? So customer needed a way in which the communication could happen privately through the AWS network and not through the internet because everything is hosted by AWS itself. Now this kind of a architecture has advantages related to security, lower latency as well as lower cost. Let's look into the downsides of public internet. Now there are multiple set of downsides. First primary is related to the data transfer cost. So if a communication is happening between your resources in AWS and internet, the amount of charge is a little higher. And when you have a lot of data, you'll get a good amount of data transfer bill. The second disadvantage is related to the higher latency. Third primary disadvantage is that there can be bottleneck at your internet gateway level because the traffic towards and from the internet is flowing through the internet gateway. 
and fourth is security now some might say that the communication to the aws services happens via https so the traffic can be secure but that is not the case there have been a lot of vulnerabilities even related to ssl and tls some have been quite serious and this is the reason why for sensitive workloads organization prefer that their data do not traverse the internet at all so in order to overcome these kind of a scenarios aws has released a feature of vpc endpoint so at a high level overview the vpc endpoint allows the resources that are part of the vpc to connect to other aws services or other supported services over the aws private network this is very important area to understand so if we look into it from the diagrammatic perspective on the left hand side we have the isolated private subnet over here and on the right hand side we have the aws services so what aws has introduced is the vpc endpoint feature now the traffic from the isolated private subnet if it wants to communicate to other set of supported services the traffic can be routed to the vpc endpoint and from the vpc endpoint the traffic goes to the aws services through the private network so now no internet is being used in such kind of a scenario so let's do one thing before we go ahead and understand the other aspects let's have a quick demo to understand how things work now for today's demo i have two ec2 instances one is the public instance here and the second one is private instance now this private ec2 instance does not have a internet connectivity at all and this is the reason why what we will be doing we will be connecting to the public ec2 instance from public ec2 we will be connecting to the private ec2 instance in private ec2 we'll check whether it has a internet connectivity or not and then we'll see on how it is able to communicate to other aws services even without internet connectivity so let's quickly copy the ip of the public ec2 now from my terminal i'll connect to the public ec2 instance so this is the public ec2 and from here i'll connect to the private ec2 all right now if you see the ip address is different first time when we connected to the public ec2 the ip address the private ip was 44.199 and from public ec2 we connected to the private ec2 instance and a private ec2 instance ip is 26.218 i'll clear the screen here now from the private ec2 if we try and do a ping on google.com you see it is not working there is no internet connectivity at all for this private ec2 instance i'll do a control c now the second step is we'll go ahead and we'll run a aws s3 ls command so what does this command do it shows you the list of s3 buckets that you have now let me quickly also show you that so if i'll open up the s3 console at this stage i have multiple set of s3 buckets that we have used for wide variety of demos now all of the list of s3 buckets that you see is the same that you will see in the cli command as well so if i'll run this command you see it is successful we are able to see all of the s3 buckets that are present now the question is how since the instance does not have a internet connectivity still it is able to communicate to s3 and the answer to this is because of the vpc endpoint that is created now i'll also quickly show you that if we go to the vpc console let's go to the endpoint and here you see that i have one endpoint that is available and through this specific endpoint our ec2 instance is communicating to the s3 bucket now let's also do one thing let's also deassociate this endpoint altogether so that we can understand the other scenario as well so what i'll do i'll just remove the route so i have deassociated this vpc endpoint altogether so now if we run the aws s3 ls command you see we are not really getting any response primarily because there is no internet connectivity at all all right so i hope at a high level overview you understood what vpc endpoint is trying to do now again when you associate this vpc endpoint with this isolated private subnet again the resources should be able to communicate to the destined aws services let's also quickly try it out 
So again, I'll go ahead and I'll associate our VPC endpoint with the isolated private subnet. Let's do a control C. We'll clear the screen. We'll run the S3 LS command once again and you see things are working perfectly well. Great. So I hope with this you understood the prime importance of VPC endpoints. Now, before we conclude at a high level overview, note that there are three primary types of VPC endpoints that are available. You have a gateway endpoint, you have the interface endpoint and you have a gateway load balancer endpoint. Now, when the VPC endpoint feature was quite new, gateway endpoints were used quite extensively. Then you had the interface endpoints and the latest release was the gateway load balancer endpoint. Now, irrespective of so many endpoint types that are available, note that the prime challenge that each endpoint solves is to send the traffic to a destined AWS service through AWS private network and not through the internet. Now, depending upon the endpoint that you choose, the architecture remains to be a little different, but the main aim is always the same. Now, in today's video, our aim is to understand the basic of VPC endpoints and not each of the endpoint architecture. Whenever time arises, we will be discussing about each one of them if required. So with this, we'll conclude today's video.